Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jimmy. If you've ever struggled with how to choose the right delta for your trades, then you're in the right place. In this video, we're gonna dive into delta. We're gonna talk about what it means, how to use it to structure your trades, and how to use it to tailor a trade to be a little more long or bullish or a little more bearish or short. We're gonna talk about all these components. And I wanna just dive right into this. This is episode three of the 10 part series, 10 principles to options trading. If you missed uh, episode one and two, I encourage you to go back and watch those. Then come back over here and you'll get a better idea of kind of how I'm structuring things. But we're diving into Delta today and I just wanna use Roku to give a good example. And the first thing I wanna do is I just want you to think about anyone on YouTube who's made a video about weekly or monthly income, you've probably heard them talk about selling puts. Now, when they sell those naked puts, they're specifically choosing a strategic strike based on sort of percentage of winning. They wanna know what's the chance I'm gonna win on this trade. And you can go right to Delta and you can figure that out. Delta tells you the percent chance that your option is going to expire in the money, okay? Meaning you would have to buy 100 shares of stock if you sold a naked put. So let's look at that. So if I come over here, you can see that on Roku, the 275 naked put right here, the delta is 20. What that means is that there is a 20% chance that this option is going to get breached and expire in the money where I'm gonna have to buy those shares. Now, conversely, or inversely, there's an 80% chance that it will expire out of the money and that I it will just, the contract will go away, I'll keep my credit, my premium, and then I'll move on. Sort of a rinse and repeat process. And that's what everyone ultimately wants to happen. They want their put to expire out of the money. There is an 80% chance that this one will expire out of the money. What you can also do on this delta column is you can switch this delta column to percent in the money. And you can see that that changes to 25%. And I, this could be because the markets are closed. Usually percent in the money and delta will line up fairly close. It's an indicator of in the moneyness. How, what's the percent chance it's gonna finish in the money? So if you know that information going in, you can say that if I trade a thousand times, there's a chance that 200 of my trades could expire in the money if I do nothing, if I just let them run their full course, this full 46 days to expiration, DTE, and just let it expire without adding time, extending duration, or rolling my strikes, moving my strikes around, which you can all do with a naked put. So when you do put this position on, one thing that I'll tell you to look at, and this is something that through practice will make you better in terms of kind of knowing where you stand in terms of being long or short the market. Now, we know that if we sell a naked put, that that's a bullish position because we want the stock to go higher. We want it to finish above 275. If it finishes above 275, it finishes out of the money, it expires worthless, I keep my $7 and roughly 20 cents uh, per share. So $720 I would keep for a one lot and I would move on and probably repeat the process. But if you come down here on this bar, and it's really nice in Tasty Trade because it, it lays it out for you. If you're not using Tasty Trade and you want to, there is a link in the description below. I encourage you to use that link to sign up for a Tastyworks account because our channel will get a credit and I really, really appreciate that. It's a really nice referral credit that we get through Tastyworks. Now, if I look at this, you can see this delta says 19.60 right here, roughly about 20. So when it says that my delta is about 20, that means you're basically long about 20 shares of stock. Now, each contract is a commitment on 100 shares, but the long, you could say the longedness of this is that you're equivalent of 20 shares long Roku. Now, you're going to increase how long you are by moving closer to the money. So right now, we're long about 20 shares. Now let's move up to, let's go to 31 delta. Right there, I'm long about 31 shares. And I can come all the way up to at the money and be long, let's come right here, 
long almost 50 shares. So anytime you're selling an at the money put or an at the money call, you're long about 50 shares or short 50 shares of stock based on whether you're using a put or using a call. So why don't we dive further into this? Let's talk about now that we have an understanding of Delta. And if you don't fully understand Delta and you have some more questions, just drop it in the comment section below and I'll circle back through and answer on those. I, I love getting those questions and I think it's nice to be able to have a little back and forth discussion in the comment section. I'm gonna move this back out to, let's go back out to 20 Delta. Now let's say I wanna, I'm a premium seller, volatility is climbing, I wanna sell premium into this vol spike and then I wanna let volatility crush and then I buy that contract back to close it out. But let's say I'm not comfortable being long 20 shares of stock on Roku for whatever reason. Maybe we think that the markets are overbought. We think Roku's had too big of an up move. What can we do to balance out the Delta number? Any ideas out there? One option is you can come over to the call side and you could sell the 20 Delta call. So let's sell it real quick. All right, so we have the 275 and this 375 call on. Now you can see this calls 21 Delta. So what do you think the result is gonna be? Selling a 21 Delta on the call side and selling the 20 Delta on the put side. They're almost gonna go neutral. And if we look down here on the Delta, we're now negative 1.22 shares of Roku. And you might think, well, that's really odd. What does that, wait, what does that mean? So what this means is that you're closer to the money on the call side than you are on the put side in terms of delta. So if you have heavier delta on the call side, you can almost think of it like a, like a weight, I guess. There's more weight pressing down on the call side and it's causing the overall position to be equivalent to minus 1.22 shares of stock. Now, if you see a positive number here, that means you're long. So let's do this. Let's move this strike to 19 and let's leave the put at 20. What do we think is gonna happen here? Well, if we look down here, we're now long 0.75 shares of stock. This is what I love about options and I'm gonna go on my tangent here, all right? So bear with me. I just had a discussion in the private Slack group with someone about trying to let go of the market sentiment, the market direction, you know, are we going up? Are we going down? I think a lot of people get hung up on that. And I don't think that's the right way to go because if that causes you anxiety, then figure out a way to not be so long or not be so short. You can basically adjust it to fit your risk tolerance or your your profile. If, you, if you're someone who wants to take a little bit of risk, but you don't want to be directional, you can do that. And let me show you real quick how we can do that. Let's go ahead and delete this leg. So we have our 275 put. Now, if we're short 20 shares, and then let's say I turn this into a put spread, and I buy the 265, which is 15 delta, what do you think is going to happen to our deltas if I sell 20 and buy 15? What do you think is going to happen? It's just a simple math problem, right? It's 20 minus 15. So if we look down at our delta, we're long about five shares of stock. So you can adjust these things to be as conservative or risky as you wanna be. So we know in this trade that we would be risking $1,000 between 275 and 265, but this position is only gonna move the equivalent of five shares of stock. So if Roku has a big up day, or let's just say a big down day, you're not gonna lose as much on this position as you would if you just had the naked put. Because now you're losing on 20 shares instead of five. And you're not gonna lose as much on this 275 as you would on this 295. Because you're the equivalent of 31 and a half shares. So you have to remember that your delta weightedness of your position plays a really big role. It especially plays a big role 
when you get a big move against your position, like during, let's say, an earnings announcement. And I want to show you a perfect example of this. So let's look at, um, let me think of one that I just had. So I traded Twilio for earnings, okay? And I'm going to open this up. This is a perfect example. I sold a position, a strangle, which just means selling the put and selling the call, both naked, in Twilio, going into earnings, and I was delta neutral, meaning I wasn't long or short any shares. I was perfectly neutral. And what happened was we got a massive move to the downside. Now, once that happened, I looked at my delta on the trade to figure out kind of where do I stand? Am I long? Am I short? What's going on with this trade? Well, look at this. 28 delta is where this current position is, the 280 put. On the other side, I have the 6 delta call. So if I have 28 deltas here, because this grew, because I likely started at 10 and 10, and now it's grown on the downside, on the put side. But when a position goes and challenges your put, the more it challenges that put, the longer you get, the more bullish that position is considered because your deltas grow. If you start out at 230 and then the position goes against you and you were at five delta, but now because the position went down, you're at 28 delta, this position keeps getting more and more long as the stock price goes against my position. So 28 minus six leaves me long 22 shares of Twilio, the equivalent of 22 shares. So I started off at 10, I was long 10 shares, and now I'm long 22 shares. So if I wanted to balance this position up, if I wanted to get back to neutrality, I could roll this position way out in time, and I could move this strike down to 270, so it's at 21, and I could roll this strike all the way down to 340, right here, to be 21 on this side. And so if I rolled out and down, and my next position was 27, or my new position was 270 put, and the 340 call, I would again be back to being delta neutral. And then I could play the game from there and see what happens. But a lot of traders will use delta to adjust positions and figure out where to go next. If you're following Tasty Trade at all, you'll notice that Tom Sosnoff routinely, if he gets a move against him, he'll start rolling his positions around. He'll start moving the untested side towards at the money to help offset that delta. Because here's the thing. If a position goes against you and you roll the untested side down, meaning you increase the delta of that, that side of the position, it helps offset a continuation move against you. So if you roll your position from 10 delta to 50 delta and the position keeps moving against you, that means that you're offsetting that position moving against you to a greater effect than if you had left it at 10 delta or 5 delta, wherever it was. You're basically balancing those deltas to help keep things neutral and hopefully get you to the point where you can get that IV crush, have the price of the stock still be between the boundaries of the call and the put, and then allow you ultimately to take the position off for a profit. So you can do this on the naked side like we just discussed. Okay, I'm going to put this 275 on at 20 delta, and then let's buy the 265 here. All right, so we've got our five deltas, and you want to know how do I balance these long five deltas. I don't want to be long. Let's say I want to be short a little, maybe five deltas. And I want to define my risk. Well, I can go to the call side and I can say, I need to hunt for, if I want to be five deltas short and I've already got five long deltas, then I need to find a way to neutralize 10 deltas. So let's see if we can do it. Let's come in here and let's look at Let's put on the 21 delta, we'll sell that. And then what we'll do 
is, let's see if there's an 11. There's a 10. Let's buy the 10. And I made that wrong. And if you do it wrong, you can highlight it and swap it. And it'll change it to a long leg. Green is long, red is short. Or sell and buy. So 21 by 10. Actually, let's do this. There's a 19 and a 9. So that's a perfect 10 delta difference. Okay. So we've got our 20 minus 15 is 5 long delta. And we want to offset it and neutralize those five delta and then add five short delta. So that means we need to shift the position by 10 short delta. So we come over here and we do a 19 minus nine gives us 10 short deltas. And look what the result is. Minus five delta. So that's how you can offset it. If you feel a little bit short, you can make it slightly short. Now, if I decide, you know, I don't think I want to be short. I want to be neutral. Then I could just neutralize this. I could say, okay, well, let's, let's go, let's move this long leg up to the 14. So now nine minus four is five. And we've got five on the other side. 20 minus 15 is five. Now, look at that. 0.11, we're 0.11 shares short. You're always gonna have little discrepancies or little fractional bits flying around. It's hard to get it perfectly. Like we had 4.99 just a minute ago, and now we have 0.11. It's very close, so it works. But now, this is a perfectly neutral position. It's risk defined. Now, when you do play this game, you might be taking more risk on one side than the other. Because you can see right here, I've got 380 by 395. That's $15 wide, whereas over here it's just 10. So that's something to be aware of. But you can create delta neutrality in any way you want, whether it's risk defined or undefined. You can tailor it to kind of fit your position. Now, one other example is let's say I just want to be straight short. Like let's go to Tesla because Tesla was up so much today. Look what Tesla did. Tesla's on a rocket ship to the moon. It's at 1208 and change. Let's say I think it's going to come crashing back down. I want to get wicked short. We come over here 46 days out and let's say I want to get pretty short. I'm going to go, I'm going to sell the 50 Delta call, the 1250. I want Tesla to stay below 1250 for the next 46 days. How many equivalent shares of stock would this be short? Well, we look right here, almost 50. We're short 50 shares of Tesla, okay? That's how you figure this all out. If you don't wanna be that short, you wanna be a little more gentle, maybe only short 25 shares, back this out to 25 or 24, 26, and you'll see your short 26 shares of Tesla. So Delta is just telling you the percent chance that you're gonna be in the money. And you can use Delta to modify and shape your trade to meet conditions that maybe match your bias if you feel short or long or neutral. For me, I'm pretty unbiased and I'm pretty neutral. I, I rarely have an opinion on stocks. I've really embraced that no one knows anything, even me. I don't know anything. I have no idea what, if you said, you know, tell me what Tesla's gonna do on Monday. I would have no idea. It's just a 50-50 shot. So I try to stick to these mechanics, much like with my Twilio position, of just starting out neutral and seeing what happens. And then you can kind of tinker with things and go from there. But delta is just a way to manage how long or short you are and to tell you the percent chance that you're gonna be in the money. So this was episode three of the 10 principles to options trading. I encourage you to, subs to subscribe if you got any value out of this video. And if you want to be part of our private Slack group, hit the join button on the YouTube banner. It's $25 a month. It's a great group of people. We discuss tons of information about the stock market, about the options market, and I post all my trades there. So you can ask me questions in real time if you grab a channel membership. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter, and there are links to everything in the description below. If you want a Tastyworks account, please come over and sign up through the description link. It'll give the channel a credit and I really, really appreciate it. So thank you for stopping by. If you have questions, drop them below. I will absolutely answer them and I'll see you in episode four. Mm -hmm.